Here's what they had been saying the president was up to in SOT 6. I noticed on the president's schedule the last two days, uh, there have been no public events. Is he resting after the large international trips? Well, the president's have? been busy. Just because you don't see uh, something necessarily on the public schedule doesn't mean that uh, there's not a lot of work going on. What exactly has he been doing yesterday and today? So he's been in meetings. I was, uh, I was, call I was scheduled to meet with him today uh, uh, in, in the Oval Office. So he's been meeting with his senior staff. I think some of you may have seen him when, uh, when the, the First Lady of Ukraine uh, was vid visiting with our First Lady. Uh, I believe you saw, uh, you saw him very briefly. Uh, so he's just been very busy uh, dealing with uh, the issues of the American people and meeting with his uh, staff and senior staff the last two days hmm, really yeah you, uh, you were scheduled to, you didn't say you actually did meet with him so what they, they've been lying they've been lying <laughs> they did they they lie about his health to us every day if it's a day ending and why so we got another one what do you make of it uh, i mean look yesterday was cancer today it's it's you know covid I'm glad it's not monkeypox. That's probably on the way. <laughs> I, but, but I mean, like, in all honesty, it's father time, right, Megan? I mean, that's the yeah. issue that we're dealing with here. It's not like this is going to get any better for him anytime soon. He could be fit as a fiddle, but uh, I, you just can't deliver even when he's feeling great. What, what I what I love is, you know, every day at the White House is now, where's Waldo? It's like, oh, yeah, you saw with, the, you know, the first lady of Ukraine. He was there in the background somewhere if you squint really hard. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you're, you're like you saw him very briefly at somebody else's meeting. <laughs> Wait a minute, who's the president? You know, like so now we know I mean, he had he has COVID. It's amazing how quickly like expectations have just gotten lowered. To <laughs> it's expected every time he speaks, there's going to be a cleanup effort. You know, yeah. Glenn Kessler is going to come out and try to fact check and be like he didn't actually say he he has cancer. Then people reply with the video and he's like, OK, on, on, on reevaluation, he said he had cancer. That's fine, guys. That's totally normal for Wait, a president me, in a very advanced age to claim he has cancer. Let me play that. He claimed he had other... asthma. Now he's got COVID. <laughs> like, what is this? Like, what is this? What, I, mean, I don't know. This little Wait, from we, a president. We have to play that so people know what we're talking about. Yesterday, he was trying to make a comment about the environment and how climate change is an emergency, which we'll get to in one second as a bigger topic. But he slipped this in about him allegedly having cancer and maybe even having gotten it from an oil spill on his mother's windshield when he was a boy. OK, I don't watch. I just lived up the road. I just in an apartment complex when we moved to Delaware. And because it was a four lane highway that was accessible, my mother drove us and rather than us be able to walk. And guess what? The first frost, you know what was happening. You had to put on your windshield wipers to get literally the oil slick off the window. That's why I and so damn many other people I grew up have cancer. <laughs> That's why you hear it? That's why I and so many damn people with whom I grew up have cancer have cancer. Have. Then the White House I mean, came when out you said, think about it, it kind of makes mean sense when it snows, oil cancer falls on your car and gives you cancer. <laughs> oil, <laughs> oil, 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 snowy oil cancer. <laughs> yeah, it gets every time. <laughs> it's, 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 it is a very dangerous <laughs> epidemic. You should, and it's particularly endemic to Delaware. <laughs> when, Wait, like I that's mean, exactly how right. How many what is of us can relate? You drive on the highway, years. oil cancer snowing. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> What am I going to say? Ten years of my life in the first ten, and then another four in Syracuse, New York. They only get a hundred days of sun. All right, it's very snowy all the time, and they never cancel anything. And I never once saw an oil snow, not one time. I also grew up <laughs> with my mom driving me around. I mean, maybe I should be worried, uh, like about the skin cancer from the oil snow. I don't. <laughs> but no, nonetheless, the White House now saying no, he doesn't have. He meant had had cancer, skin cancers, and that. Before he went in office, the White House doctor said he had some skin cancers, non-melanoma, and he had Mohs surgery to get them removed. And it's because of all the time he spent in the sun. So which is it? <laughs> it's sunny oil snow cancer, <laughs> Megan. I don't know why this is so difficult to follow. I, like you're so critical. And I just wish you could see the clear diagnosis that he's been provided here that the American people, frankly, should look out for. Because this is the kind of thing that could really take hold in a community. <laughs> It's like when you get the rainbow after both sun and rain, you get the skin cancer after both snow and oil. 
I mean, I do think it'd be fair to say that you would think he spent too much time in the sun. Like anytime you hear him speak, there's a possibility that the guy's had heat stroke when he's coming up with these ideas. Yeah. But like we're having a president try to declare a climate emergency and execute powers that he absolutely should not be. That should be left to the legislature. Like we still have a government, you know, even though our president clearly isn't all the way there. But he's declaring a climate emergency based on his belief that as his mother drove them on a highway, it snowed oil cancer. <laughs> and and everyone's acting like this is normal. Like we were told so many times we have under President Trump, we had a great economy, right? Everything is going great. This is not normal. Well, this is not normal. I mean, mm-hmm. inflation's going up while the president's concerned about snow oil cancer. It doesn't make any sense. He, and also, so, if you go back to the quote, one of the things that I think is the funniest is that, like, he's got this unique experience where his mom drove him to school. Yeah. I mean, wow. That is really <laughs> something. Most of us uh, just went uphill both ways in the yeah, snow. Right. Uh, like, what is this, 1926? I guess it is. Yeah, that's next I level. It, is. it, it used like to be it was uphill snow both ways in the snow. Now it's oil cancer was snowing. Yeah. <laughs> right. I can <laughs> run up you. <laughs> but did you have oil cancer snow? Ah. <laughs> so he's. He was making those remarks because he's trying to alarm people about climate change. And it was sort of a wah wah in terms of actual prescriptions, because on Tuesday, the Washington Post had said he's going to come out and declare a national climate emergency. And that, of course, as we know from COVID emergencies, opens up a whole host of executive powers where he could sort of require all this stuff of the energy industry that would have been very controversial and would have hurt you know, inflationary uh, policies and would have hurt gas prices and so on. But nevertheless, the far left wanted him to do it. Well, he didn't do it. So his rhetoric sounded very much like he was about to do it. He, he ratcheted up, you know, the rhetoric about we're all going to die, basically. And then he, he put on a little Band-Aid or two at the end with like, we're going to try to help you have more air conditioning, which makes sense. That actually makes sense. But it wasn't the prescription for what he was saying we're going through. Here's how he talked about it. Uh, yesterday on climate. As president, I have a responsibility to act with urgency and resolve when our nation faces clear and present danger. It is literally not figuratively a clear and present danger. The health of our citizens and our communities is literally at stake. The UN's leading international climate scientists call the latest climate report nothing less than, quote, code red for humanity. And our economy is at risk. So we have to act. Climate change is literally an existential threat to our nation and to the world. Folks, when I think about climate change, and I've been saying this for three years, I think jobs. And the world is counting on us. Okay. No, so he, what do you mean? It's clear and present sounds, danger. Yeah, he, he sounds like Harold Hill from The Music Man, to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, this guy, and I don't know, one of the best pictures that somebody caught video of his full motorcade rolling up to this climate press conference. And it's like 30 cars blowing smoke out of the tailpipe (laughs) over a dirt road. Did you see the place where they picked to do that? It looked like it was in Afghanistan. (laughs) (laughs) After the Air Force One ride. (laughs) Exactly. It's just so it's so bizarre, right? When they kind of sort through their priorities, the entire country is screaming at a decibel level that is deafening. Our prices are too high. Our gas prices are too high. Inflation is killing us. Please, for the love of God, focus on the economy. And he's like, yeah, you know, I got a good, good idea for that. I'm going to I'm going to actually uh, implement some climate change things that makes all of that stuff worse. And oh, by the way, when I hear climate change, I hear jobs. Yeah, that's what the same people think, too. But it's not creating jobs. It's losing them. Talk mm-hmm. to people in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, West Virginia. Talk to them about losing jobs. Man, this guy's done more to do that than anybody else. Skincare is super important to me, and it has been for my whole life. In this line of work, I need to keep the face looking fresh and ideally close to the top of its game. It takes sticking to a routine and products that I trust, and that is why I'm happy to tell you today about GenuCell. I trust them. GenuCell is made from the highest quality ingredients, and it can become a part of your skincare routine, too, at a price you'll love. Highest quality but not the highest prices, not by a long shot. At GenuCell.com slash MK60, you can pick up their most popular package, which is awesome. It's got a whole assortment of their very best products, the ones everybody loves, all collected in one basket at 60% off. One of the products in there right now is called Immediate Effects, 
And as the name implies, it starts working right away. When you check out at Jenny's Hall's website, don't forget to enter the code MK for even more savings and free gifts. Plus, if you're not happy with the results, you're going to get 100% of your money back. That's how confident Jenny Cell is in its products. Don't wait. Start your skincare journey today and see the difference with Jenny Cell. Go to JennyCell.com slash MK60. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash MK60. JennyCell.com slash MK60. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.